So welcome to the channel. I built a chicken plucker, and that's probably how you found my channel. I also built a scalder, and I've had a few requests to show how I built that, but I've just never really gone back and tried to make a video out of photos. So today, I'm upgrading it, going from 120 volt to 240, and almost doubling the power of the heating element. The total cost is right around $50 for this upgrade. Let me show you what I got. On the table, I have a few parts. A thermostat, which was about $10. A plug, which was about 12. The most expensive part, the electric cord. This guy was almost 20. And a heating element, which surprisingly cheap. This was only like $10. And this is a 3,500 watt element. Now the 20 amp outlet in the garage can handle 4,800 watts max but I want to stay under that just because when it comes to plugs and outlets, if the connection isn't just perfect, you get heat and then you start melting stuff. So if I stay underneath that 4,800 watts, stick around 35, I think it's just going to be easier, safer, and just work better. Plus this barrel is not that huge. So at most I'm heating maybe 10 gallons, 12 gallons of water at a time. This is only about a 15 gallon um, bucket anyway. I welded on a one inch bung to the barrel and um, there's, there's a far easier way to do this. You can simply just drill a hole. They make stainless ones like this that thread from both sides and you can just put it on in a matter of minutes. Uh, welding took considerably longer. I'm relatively new to welding so I wanted to experiment so I saw this as an opportunity to uh, play with my equipment. Here's the, uh, the old heating element. And there's nothing wrong with it, it just kind of gets disgusting because, well, chickens. Everything else is fine, you can see the contacts are in good shape and all that. Okay, that's the intro, let me cut to it and get everything installed. This is a mechanical thermostat, and this little indicator, which was pointing to 125, can go higher than that. We'll test this out, and I'll make some indicators on that later. On there later. All the connectors are soldered and tightened down. All that's left is to add some water and test it. Very important to add water first because a heating element not surrounded by water will heat up way too fast and it might melt or do some weird stuff. So it's gotta have somewhere to dump all that energy. All right, time to test and see if I wired it correctly. Okay, the test was successful. Now I'm gonna add the one little safety thing. I did unplug it. 
we're going to give that a snip, strip that, and add a terminal for the ground wire. There we go, and good and tight. And I'm just gonna add this wire, ground it to this, to the bucket, as just one last little safety precaution. I noticed a tiny little leak coming out of the holes. So I have some of this, well, basically it's a, like a rubber gasket type stuff. And I'm gonna throw that on the back side here. Also gonna put some on the inside of the holes as well. And the inside of the barrel. You're not gonna be able to see that, but just trust me. It's happening. Added this little cleat and another screw with a washer just to keep this clamped tight up against the aluminum plate. Just started it up. You can see the temp probe is in the water, pretty well centered. Five gallons or so in there. Plugged in. That's a 20 amp, 240 volt. And on the healing bench, I'm tracking the progress. We'll find out in just a little bit how quickly we heat it up and how high it will go. I have a grilling thermometer that I'm using to monitor it. And you can see, got up to about 158 and then Drop down to about 142. It'd be ideal if it stayed as close to 150 as possible. Right now, I just set it to max to see what would happen. And I got up to about 200 degrees. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit now and see what happens. Thank you for checking out the build. Now in this last part of the video, I'm gonna run some tests. And the way I'm going to do that is I have a Sense Home Energy Monitor. And I've kind of rigged it up here. I put a piece of aluminum, there's some neodymium magnets behind there. And that allows me to move this from the garage to the house. Uh, same thing too, I kind of have a little plug thing wired up too. But either way, it allows me to move it between the house and the garage, which are two separate 200 amp circuits, so I can do stuff like this. I am heating it up to 150 degrees or thereabouts. I have the Wi-Fi grilling thermometer hooked up. And the first test that I did is power output. So this heating element, we'll do some math. Uh, 1393, 4729. So it's supposed to be 3500 watt heating element. Looks like it's a little bit less than that. I did end up buying a more powerful heating element. This one is allegedly 4,500 watt, and I'm going to test that one after the 3,500. All right, test number one is now concluded. I've measured the output of the heating element and the settings on the thermostat. It reached a high of 151 and a low of 135 before turning on again. Now I'm going to make a modification to the thermostat and switch out to the 4500 watt heating element and run this test again. So two things are different. The heating element is now 4,500 watts. Previously it was 3,500, at least on paper. Also on the aluminum mounting plate here, I drilled a hole that is now in the center of the thermostat. The temperature sensing portion of the thermostat now is a direct line of sight to the barrel metal. There's no aluminum between that. We'll see if those two changes make a difference. 
And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Actually, this one is overachieving. So right around 1386 was before, and it popped up to right around 6,000. Dropped down a little bit then. But yeah, this is, uh, looks like a true 4,500 watt heating element. All right, test number two is done. And something interesting, the temperature increase was about 31 degrees every 10 minutes, where before it was about 20 degrees every 10 minutes. So that's a significant increase in speed. Super happy about that. Something interesting that I did not expect, the temperature, the, the variation was exactly the same. So 16 degree drop and then it's kicked on again. Something I'm finding really fascinating is the previous heating element that was in here was running 1500 watts and the cord got super hot. And even at the outlet, that got really hot. But now running 4,500 watts, three times the energy at 220, the cord is cool and the outlet is cool. Playing around with the thermostat every which way, turns out it's gonna be 16 degrees no matter what I do. So I put it on the most secure way I could and found my settings. Right now it is set thermostat plus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's gonna be 50 degrees over what the label is on the thermostat. My important settings are 160. That keeps it right in the good scalding temperature for chicken. Uh, shooting for that 150 mark to 155 is ideal. And then 200 degrees Fahrenheit We'll keep it in that range for the Texas shrink bags. And I wrote down the reference down here. So there you go. The settings are dialed in. I just tested everything and it is calibrated. So that is a wrap. I'm very happy with how this build turned out. Thanks for checking out the video. Till next time. One last finishing touch. I redid some of the wiring right here. Ended up crimping and soldering a little bit different style, put some shrink tube on and rerouted the wire. What I wanted to do was utilize this bracket as a strain relief. Before the wire could move around and put stress on these individual connections, as well as this uh, solder point. Now everything is absorbed by the strain relief. That makes it more durable less likely to take damage in daily use and it just makes me feel better and yeah i know there's still exposed terminals right here but that you know what it's not plugged in all the time